Coming up next on this episode of Outlook TV, I'll do that again. Vancouver, Canada Pride Plans. Gaily Forward, a marching band in Toronto. Maddo's new book, Maddo Graphy, and much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Emily Ann Fraser. And my name is T. We'd like to thank the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations for the honor and privilege to film this episode of Outlook TV on their traditional unceded lands. Outlook TV is the queer magazine news show that brings you the stories that matter the most from coast to coast. And as if we weren't loud enough, a newly formed queer marching band forms in Toronto. Gaily Forward is here to scream and shout. Andre's got the scoop. Hello everyone, salut tout le monde. Do you like marching? Do you enjoy gaily marching? Well, I've got just the right group for you. Follow me. Uh, I, I came up with this project. When I moved to Toronto, I was looking for a marching band to join, but I couldn't really find one. Uh, and so I decided that I would make my own, talking with a friend. And he pretty much right off the top of his head came up with uh, gaily forward. And I thought that was a great idea. First and foremost, I wanted to create a safe environment for queer people to come together and have fun making music. I thought it would be fun to join this marching band because it's a bit of a challenge for me. Like it's definitely a step up in comparison to the other drumming I've been doing. So I'm hoping to learn a lot of new skills here. Playing in this band has been really fun so far. I definitely find it challenging. This is my first time like learning how to read sheet music, so it's been a bit of a learning curve for me, but everyone's been really welcoming, so it's been fun. Pretty much most of the members didn't know each other before they've joined, and so everyone's uh, being really welcoming and, and making friends amongst themselves, so it's been really nice to see that. I decided to play snare because it's kind of the rock star of the drumline. You show up, you play the hardest stuff, and you get to show off a little bit. And I'm if nothing if not a showman. I play the snare drum or just percussion in general, and I have been playing drums in a marching setting for about 10 years now. Uh, we're really focusing on queer pop. So uh, whether that's music by queer artists or just pop that's kind of celebrated in the queer community or artists who have really shown support for the queer community. Playing with other LGBTQ people, um, it's very freeing. It's, uh, we're all kind of band geeks in our own way. It's easier for us to kind of be ourselves, be our geeky selves. Feels good to have a hobby that um, you're kind of giving to somebody else, giving the joy of music and performance to someone else. I decided to play the alto saxophone because um, my music teacher recommended me to play it and I continued playing it and I fell in love with it through that. I have played in a band before. I played in a jazz band, a repertoire band, and an honor band in high school. Uh, it's really nice to play with an LGBTQ plus band because I feel very welcome and it's very accepting here and I don't feel like I have to hide myself. Uh, anyone can join our band. We accept all genders and people of all ages. Uh, we. Uh, don't require an audition to join either. So. I joined this band because it existed. I was looking for queer musical spaces and uh, this popped up as a recommendation and I joined. I decided really early on in life that I was going to play the trumpet. My inspiration was Bugs Bunny. Uh, he played the instrument and I wanted to play like Bugs Bunny. I do not play an instrument but I am part of the color guard. And so I get to wave flags and spin them around, and that's why I joined the marching band, because it's super fun and super queer. Our very first public performance is going to be the Toronto Pride Parade this year on June 30th. Don't forget to follow them on their Instagram, and also don't miss the premiere performance at the next Toronto Gay Pride Parade. Andre Tardif in Toronto for Outlook TV. Next month is the start of Pride season, and we've got an amuse-bouche for you with a story from last year's Montreal Pride. Take it away, Ollie. It is now a tradition for Outlook TV to be at Montreal Pride, and once again, we created a magnificent Outlook TV booth, where this year you actually got to talk to Mina Mercury and myself. So let's see how our day went. Hello, hello, it's Mina Mercury from Outlook TV here in Montreal, celebrating Fierte 2023. 
Happy Pride! Happy Pride, Marcel! For this month of Pride! Bon fierte! And then my second book, A Family, which came out a couple of years ago, uh, is the story of a, a man named Paul. As he turns 40, his best friends have asked him to help him start a family, so he becomes a sperm donor and helps to lesbian couple with him and create a family. But at the same time as he's doing that, it kind of fills back uh, the layers on his own relationships, namely with his uh, partner Michael, who's a bit younger than him, and it's a bit of a celebration of a chosen family. And then I also run the uh, Violet Hour Book Club, which meets every month at the Gate Archives, and we discuss classic and contemporary works of LGBTQ literature. Happy Pride! We are so excited to see you again for next year's edition, so make sure that you follow our social media to know when and how you can meet us again. For Outlook TV, this is Ali in Montreal. We're going to have to take a little break now. At Outlook TV, we'd like to acknowledge that May in Canada is Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Hi, I'm Chris Kennedy with the Vancouver Pride Society, and you're watching Outlook TV. back welcome back to outlook tv being queer is not all rainbows and unicorns this next story is something we should all be aware of it's a film called i don't know who you are the film i don't know who you are premiered across canada and we talked to mark clennan who played the central character benjamin to find out what this film is about well no i was hoping to get an increase on my credit card limit if possible. I don't know who you are. It's shot and set in Toronto. Um, my character's name is Benjamin, and I play um, a young man who is the uh, victim of a violent sexual assault, and the film follows him over the course of a weekend as he tries to find various means to recover and get the resources and help that he needs. A bit about Benjamin. He is um, a musician, he is an immigrant, he lives in Toronto. He is, you know, someone handling life in his own way and dealing with this trauma in his own unique way. I, I think he's one of those characters that represents a lot of us because he makes some good decisions, some bad decisions. But I, I just think he's, he's a very complex human, I would say. I'm very blessed to have been a part of the, the film as a producer and being there from the very start as the you know, script was being written and developed. And there were so many facets of the film that were very well researched. And also having the experience of M.H. Murray, who wrote the film, who wrote the film based on his own experience, helped to really impact my performance and the role. But yeah, you know, I understood very early on that this is um, a heavy role and it's a role that requires a fair bit of sensitivity. And I took it. Yeah, I just felt the need to, to go into it, knowing as much as I can and being as well informed as I could. Had, you know, having been there throughout the script development, I knew that there were some scenes that were a bit heavier and I guess I anticipated those. But then there were some of the scenes, like some of the scenes at the pharmacy that I, I don't know that I 
I don't know what I was expecting, but those were some of the harder scenes for me, especially when I had to, to go back to the pharmacist and essentially beg. And I think this film really, for me, is a reminder of just compassion and just, you know, thinking about other people. For someone like myself, as an openly gay man who has, you know, is in the community, I've had many conversations with my friends about so many of these issues and we've gone in really deep discussing the nuances of it. But, you know, this is not the case for everyone and there are people who are for the first time encountering some of these themes and ideas and I think this movie is for everyone and I think that everyone um, will hopefully resonate with some of the themes in the movie but given the complexity of of opinions about certain issues you know I think at the very minimum this film is there to give those people an insight into something that they may not know about next month you can see it in theaters um, throughout the U.S. And then at a undetermined time, you'll be able to see it on streaming platforms here in Canada and in the U.S. This is James Goodman for Outlook TV. We've got another amuse-bouche for you. Oh, yeah. Angus sits in on some major Canada Pride plans. Check it out. Vancouver will be the host city for Canada Pride this year in conjunction with the annual Vancouver Pride Festival. Today we're going to go behind the scenes to speak to one of the planners to find out what we can expect for 2024. Pride started, I think it was back in about 2015. Uh, it was a little thought that Fierte Canada Pride had at their regional conference that happened in Regina. Uh, Fierte Canada Pride is the national association of pride organizations across Canada. Uh, and it was an initiative to try to bring pride to all the various corners of Canada, uh, rural, remote, large communities like Vancouver as well, uh, and, and to bring all of us together to really celebrate and to, and to really collaborate about pride across the country. First Canada Pride was actually held in Montreal uh, before COVID, uh, and then just as we came out of COVID, it was held a couple years ago, 2022, uh, in Winnipeg, uh, and then Vancouver. We have the pleasure of welcoming the country here to us this year. It's between a regular Pride year and a Canada Pride year, at least for us here in Vancouver. We are rolling the red carpet out. We are welcoming every individual from across the country to come and join us for the week-long festivities. Uh, we will, of course, have our regular flagship events like Van, Van Pride Fest as well as our Vancouver Pride Parade. Uh, but we have the addition of our new Queer Rights Summit that is happening, uh, as well as a bunch more pop-ups that are happening around the city as well. So this event serves as a call to action because we really just want to celebrate and showcase to the rest of the country, uh, the unique queer diversity that's here in Vancouver. This is an inaugural uh, conference that Vancouver is putting on this year, um, and it's a component of Canada Pride uh, that we are very excited to continue uh, and, and include as part of our legacy moving on past this year as well. Uh, we're inviting delegates from across the country uh, to come and share their experiences, share their thoughts, and collaborate on ideas uh, on how we can really elevate and really lift the voices of our community uh, across the country, especially for those uh, community members members that identify within the trans and non-binary community. There's our whole event for Canada Pride happens July 26th through August the 4th. Uh, there's pop-ups happening uh, prior to that week as well, because, you know, we like to celebrate a little early here in Vancouver. Uh, and then our proclamation that is happening over at Vancouver City Hall on July the 28th. Uh, and then, of course, our, our flagship event, the Vancouver Pride Parade, happening on Sunday, August the 4th. Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt in Vancouver. We're gonna have to take a little break now. You know, with all this talk of a moose bouche I think it's time I go get a little bouche. You are what you eat. I'm Scott McLeod at Beers for Queers and you're watching Outlook TV. Welcome back to Outlook TV. You know, all that amuse-bouching was not filling enough for me. What else you got? Oh, well, T, would you like to get your pies peaked? Because Darren checks out the beers for queers happening at Peaked Pies. 
It used to be that the Vancouver queer community was centered downtown, but not so much anymore. We're here in Burnaby at an event called Beers for Queers. We're going to talk to the organization people and see what's going on, how you can get involved. I'm glad you're here. Let's go and check it out. We've been doing Beers for Queers here at Peach Pies for just over a year now. We started April of last year, and it was just a way to kind of like gather the community a little bit outside of Vancouver City Central. There is a definite need for a safe queer space in this neighborhood. And I find east of Commercial Drive, there doesn't tend to be anything that's very like queer centered. So this was, yeah, a good way to kind of get people and to, like leave their house and interact in a way that wasn't like a, in a, like a, like a nightclub setting. Yeah, so this is, I mean, it's earlier in the day, so it's from like 7 till 9 p.m. It has an early cutoff. There's not like a downtown location, so it's not like you're you're not rushing to get anywhere. It's a lot more of like a chill, easy, like meet up with friends. Food and snacks and stuff as well. So people who aren't necessarily like wanting to drink alcohol, there's other options and they can just like hang out and have a good time. We do have alcohol. Um, we serve beer on tap. We also have like tall cans and then we do ciders as well. Usually the demographic, it varies. It ages, like obviously it's like a 19 plus event to have beer, but we are still a cafe, so anybody can come. It tends to range from 19 to 35-ish, uh, but we've seen, seen a lot of different people coming through. I would like to see this become like a regular safe space for people who can come in and meet each other, make friends, meet different members of the community. I've been talking to a lot of people who are hopeful that they can have like the lesbian groups and the trans groups and the gay men and like it's it's been described to me as Vancouver is like a city of like little pockets of kittens everybody wants to play together so this is a good way to kind of mix everybody together we have had really good response from the community a lot of the local queer people have been excited to have a space to come and hang out after work where they don't have to travel. And then a lot of the people who kind of coming through on the bus pass and stuff on the bus lines are excited to come and meet up as well. I am very lucky to have Alex and Carrie, the founders of Peaked Pies, have been very solid support in maintaining the safe space for queer people. We have had, since we've opened, minor like alterations done to our pride flag on the door. And the business owner's response was like very quick and immediate. If they deface the small flag, put a bigger one on there. So we do the Beers for Queers the first Wednesday of every month. Peach Pies is located on Hastings Street um, in Burnaby Heights. And you can find us on Instagram at Peaked Pies. And we will post on our social media a couple of days before the event. We'll do a little flash. The Beers for Queers is only at the Peaked Pies in Burnaby Heights. I'm Darren for Outlook TV. And I think a couple of these pies are coming home with me. Coming up next, Mario takes us back in time for a fabulous story, Mado Graffi and her amazing novel over in Montreal. We are here in the heart of the Montreal village in front of Cabaret Mado to meet the legendary Mado Lamotte to talk about her new book in Mado Graffi, celebrating 35 years of career. Why this year? Because it's been 35 years I'm doing drag and I think it's about time to tell my story. And because I'm tired of people asking me what drag is about, what my life is about. Now I wrote a book, read my book, you're going to know everything about me. How was it like doing drag 35 years ago? It was very different, I have to tell you, because we were working most underground. We were called like uh, the different people of the crowd, the queer of the time. And the crowd was a bit different because the drag queen were not very um, mainstream like it is today. And the crowd was sometimes like talking during the show. You don't speak French? You want to take the picture? Yeah. Hey, come on stage, top of neck. Yeah. I've been alone in my, with some others of, from around the world. We've been like doing it for so long. It's available to everyone. You can see them on TV now. Some of them have radio shows. Some of them have TV shows. Some of them do Broadways. It's amazing because it shows the talent is really there. It was not like something we do on the side because we don't what, know what to do in, with our life. It's a real job, it's a real art. People tell me like, uh, my daughter is doing drag because of you. I'm like, oh, cool, all right. So it's a real improvement. It's, 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 I hope it's gonna stay in that direction because with what's happening in the United States right now, they're trying to ban drags from high school or for, from reading to children. This is so stupid.
it's in the theater school when I started to go out with a friend. We dressed up as a as crazy woman playing bingo for a party in a bar, and we had so much fun. We did it again and again and again, and we decided to do a show, and it started slowly. And I was finding myself working every week in bars. So that was the career that I didn't decide. It came to me. Drag came to me. I didn't choose drag. Drag chose me. What? Could I say about Cabernet Madou? It was the birthplace of many talent, like Rita Baga, like Gisela Labai. We had the so that we have another one this year at Canada Drag Race. Uh, the name used to work here. All the drag in Montreal has to pass by Cabernet Madou because it's like the main drag theater of Montreal. And what's coming up? More and more drag because it's what it's all about. I studied in theater and I wanted to become an actor all my life. As my other persona, I did a show in September, a Michel Tremblay play, which is going to be coming to Montreal in 2025. Wow. I have a, a project also to do another book and my first, my second actually, one, one Mado show starting in uh, September 2024 and I'm still going to Paris this year and Switzerland. So I don't think I'm going to take my retirement right now. You step with me. Bye-bye, Canada. This is Mario Langlois in Montreal for Outlook TV. Oh, would you look at the time? That's all we have for today. But as always, we will be back for more. And while you're amuse-bushing your friends, why don't you take a break and check us out on all our social media platforms, or better yet, consider volunteering with us. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Emily Ann Fraser. And my name is T. Stay, Stay fabulous, fabulous, Canada! Canada.